जय श्री माता जी विश्व के सभी साधकों का सुबह के ध्यान सत्र में हार्दिक स्वागत है आप सभी को शारदीय नवरात्रि महोत्सव की हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं आज पंचमी आज हम परम पूज्य श्री माता जी का श्री स्कंद माता के स्वरूप में ध्यान करते हैं हम सब सामूहिक बंधन लेते हैं तीन महामंत्र तत्पश्चात श्री गणेश मंत्र प्रार्थना लेते हैं परम पूज्य श्री माता जी 
कृपा कर आप हमें संतुलन दीजिए चित्त सहस्त्रार में स्थिर करके ध्यान में रहते हैं इसी ध्यान की स्थिति में श्री माता जी की अमृतवाणी आत्मसात करते हैं इट वॉज वेरी स्पॉन्टेनियसली डिसाइडेड दैट वी शुड हैव द देवी पूजा इन इंग्लैंड And this is the place where really the puja should be, because it's the place of Sada Shiva, and where Radha Shakti should be worshipped. We have to today understand. <coughs> that why do we do devi puja what is the reason <coughs> for this devi puja what do we get out of it what are we supposed to achieve in our contents within ourselves the first thing is that Kundalini is the Devi. She is the reflection of the Adi Shakti. So when you worship Devi, first you worship also your own Kundalini by giving her credit because she has given you this realization. It's much deeper understanding. than normally people have about the devi puja because they are not realized souls their kundalini not is awakened so normally when they do devi puja it for the purpose of getting realization so that the devi should be pleased prasanna and should give them realization or must give them a chance to get to somebody who will give them realization 
but you are at a different level now. So it's more of a thanksgiving to your own Kundalini and to Adi Shakti, glorifying that whatever has happened so miraculously is because of the Kundalini which was within you, which was reflected by the Adi Shakti. But one has to know that <coughs> Only we are realized souls is not the point. Only that we can feel the vibrations is not the point. That we can give realizations to others is also not the point. Then what is it? Very important is the content within us. What do we have within us is the point. These are all the expressions of what we have within. Supposing somebody is generous, then know that he is a rich man, otherwise he cannot be. So the content within us we have to see. And when we start seeing the content, Where do we find in the nature there is real content? We say the sea. Sea is there, sea full of water. So much of water it sucks in from everywhere and then it allows itself to be boiled by the sun and gives rain. But sea is the lowest level, stands at the lowest level and sucks in all the water from everywhere. In the same way, a Sahaja Yogi must know that to be really achieving more content, we have to be not at a higher level outside. It said in the Bible you have to be meek, but I think it was not explained to people. Only the strong people can be meek, secured people can be meek. Only the rich in essence can be meek, not the people who are insecure, because they are insecure, how can they be meek? And not the people who we think are rich, so-called, because if they are rich, they are not generous, they are not satisfied, they are not philanthropic, so they are not rich, they are still greedy beggars. So the content within us is to be seen. What is our content? You love me, I love you. It's very good. But when you love me, you have to know that there are certain qualities which are very lovable in a search. Actually people get lost even after surgery. They think they can get over everything perfectly all right and they are thrown overboard. So when we say that we have to be meek, this is a content, the humility is a content. Strive to that. Try to be humble with someone. You you'll like yourself. You enjoy that quality within us. That you see, I'm humbler than another person. 
And what is another thing we find as content are the great mountains because they have heights. And they are the only ones who can capture the clouds. So such a rapport there is between the humility of the ocean and the heights of the mountain. That's how a Sahaja Yogi should be. He is too high because so much of content is there in that ocean, then it has become beautiful like clouds and touched his height, his Kailasha, where he sights the Shiva. So it's so joy-giving. Of course, as you have painted me there, it's true, that was my situation once upon a time. Today also it is my situation, no doubt, in a very subtle manner, because there's so much of negativity. And I have to work it out on all kinds of levels. There is no excuse for some human being to be a devil, no excuse. And for a Sahaja Yogi there is no excuse at all. But still, once I have called you my son, my child, there is a little blessing goes, I would say, long rope. But that long rope one should not care for. You have to care for your own quality, for your own inner capacity to suck in. Now look at the ocean as it is. All that is around falls into the ocean, everything. And then the sun, we can say that's the spirit, evaporates, only possible. In the ocean, it doesn't evaporate the river so much as it can because such a wide thing, such a deep thing, inexhaustible. And then absolutely pure material comes out of that. And that can go and touch the heart. Because as a search of yours, hearts are at a very high level where there is Shiva residing. Nobody can reach there except for the purity. And unless and until you have that largeness, that depth, that humility and the maryadas, you know that sea never leaves its own maryadas. And if you press it from one end, it will express on one other side. It never leaves. If Pacific Ocean was even hundred feet deeper, there would have been a problem. So even in depth, in its height, in its spreading, it has its own maryadas. But in that maryada, he has a feeling that he is one with the nature, one with mother. He is not disturbing the mother earth, nicely placed in the body of mother earth. Nature is bound by the Divine. The Divine looks after the nature, so everything works out beautifully and you have freedom. And after Sahaja Yoga you have greater freedom. <coughs> Absolute freedom because you can not be bowed by anything nonsensical, anything sinful, anything base. You are above that like a mountain. And so wherever there is a combination of a mountain and an ocean, the ships can come. 
Deep people can only come to such shores where there is depth. That's how you achieve your depth between your heart and your Bhavasagara. That beautiful area where people can come to you and just they know this is something great. Everybody knows that. You have seen that I'm like any other woman to look at, I don't know, you might think I'm different but normally. But how many people come to my program? How do they come to my program? Must think. In Colombia when nobody had even heard my name, Thousands came, I mean, very surprising. And people had no place to sit. In Russia, where, I mean, no question of my, they knowing my name, there are no books published, nothing. So, you can say that, Mother, you manipulate it through the collective unconscious. I do not, but it does. I think so. So when the Sahaja Yogis have that content within themselves, the collective unconscious, the divine, will act, definitely act. Like a person who is spreading advertisements, this, that, yes, people come because he takes money. They think they can purchase this back. But where there's no money involved, no business involved, nothing, you people are just simple people, just like them, so. But it's all done by the Divine, isn't it? So the Divine works it out. But if the Sahaja Yogis in a place are good for nothing, then even if I am there, it does not work. Half-hearted people, if they are, it does not work. In no way to discourage you, but to tell you that you have to develop your content within yourself, a complete faith in yourself. This is the greatest property of a surgeon. And what is this ocean? It's love, it's love and love. It doesn't talk, it doesn't do much, nothing is to be done in this. It just works spontaneously. The less you do, the better. The more you try to do, I will do this, I will pray, you know. You just develop your content within yourself. And imagine you are also lucky, you have so many provisions which nobody had, that to go into jungles, they had to take all the wrath of their gurus and <coughs> nobody to protect them. And they never had Adi Shakti to worship. So you have Adi Shakti with you whose power is all this divine. So you are at such an advantageous position. But first you must realize, so when we say we should have content, then the vessel has to be strong, otherwise everything will break. And this strength is the one you should know that you are completely protected. No one can harm you. They'll try. This has to be, otherwise how will you test whether you are absolutely safe or not? So somebody has to try some tricks just to see and for you to watch how you are successful. Without doing anything, you'll be amazed, everything will be cleared up.
and you will not know how things have cleared up, how things have worked out. So the strength comes, again the question is how the strength comes into a subject. There I would say in the Shraddha. Shraddha is not blind faith. After Sahaja Yoga, after Realization, you know everything. You've seen my photographs, you've seen how Sahaja Yoga works, you've seen how you can raise the Kundalini of people, you can feel the vibrations, you can feel others, you can cure others. All this power is within you. But just to realize that power without ego is your strength. And when you are powerful, you don't have the ego because what is the need there? Ego is there only when you don't have power because you want to have more, more, more. But when you are fully there, there's no ego. So this power is to be ascertained first, to find out whether you are powerful or not, to find out first. And then, like if I have to sit on the chair, I'll see, is it all right or shaky? Oh, it's all right, I can sit on this. Some surgeries still remain on the periphery. This sometimes a very big gap between some who have reached great heights and some who are outside. All these are negative forces which were killed long time back. Only one Shakti was sufficient to kill them of Kali Shakti, Durga Shakti. But you have so many of them. You have Mahalakshmi Shakti. You got Saraswati Shakti. You have all the twelve deities are there working for you. So, realizing it is the meaning that you must have complete faith in yourself. If you still doubt yourself, That's also a human quality. I mean, a dog knows that he's a dog. He doesn't doubt that he's a dog or a cat, does he? Or a tiger knows he's a tiger and he knows what capacities he's got. It's only the human beings have got, apart from other stupid qualities, is one this that they can doubt themselves. And this doubting quality has made them cowards. In Sahaja Yoga, you should have no doubts about yourself. Because I'm doing, still doing like this, Mother, I'm still doing like this, then how? Then get rid of it. I mean, how can I solve your problem if you want to carry monkey on your back? And I'm still carrying the monkey on your back, you get rid of the monkey, finished. It's so simple. I mean, to my simple logic, this is what is the answer. Why do you want to carry the monkey and then come and tell me, Mother, I am carrying the monkey? <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> get it off your head, get it off your back. It's very simple, you are a surgery. And this is what I found about Russians. They didn't have any monkeys, really. Very surprising. I think there are no monkeys at all there. None of them. No private problems, no public problems, no any other problem, nothing, nothing they discussed, nothing. 
Uh, this is the, they could have said that our government is such, is nothing, nothing, nothing. Sad enough of everything they must have. Very well read people, very well educated, in very big professions, very humble, very open hearted. They just wanted realization. That's all. They said, You have come here for our liberation. They would even touch my sari like that. The place I walked, they would touch. Just imagine. Who has told them about vibration? I never said I am Adi Shakti. How did they recognize me? They developed that strength within themselves, that Shraddha. And they never talked about God in that country. They have some stupid people who have churches and things like that and Islamic institutions, but most of the people are so strong and the content is showing itself. Imagine every time they have a program, even now on follow-on, at least one thousand people are there. In this England we can't even get one thousand for Devi Puja. And they come all the way from thousands of miles, from Siberia, this, that. And they have booked themselves because they are the halls you have to pay for. So though the surgeries don't take money, they pay for us. But the mediocrity, to be on the periphery, not to work it out, take it easy, not to be for surgery. We don't have to kill demons. There's no need to join any uh, war or to fight like soldiers as they fought with Devi, nothing. You have just to take out the negative within yourself, lethargy from you, and work it out. We say mantras, we know what are the powers of the mantras are, but you have to keep them awakened. For that, I have told you a hundred times, you must meditate. Not the way to meditate, all right, it's like playing golf, sort. It's not that way. It's a serious thing, you are worshipping Adi Shakti with that complete understanding and dedication. You have to do it, not a mechanical thing, it's not a game, it's something very subtle and special. In no action we can describe it. It is just a very deep feeling. To that depth no other feeling goes. With that feeling you have to meditate. And then see the results. Many people say, I've done this, Mother, I've done that, I've still, because you are not deep enough. It's not how much you pray, it's not how many words you use for prayer, but it is how deeply you have touched the feet of the Divine. That is important. So today we have to see that Devi is using her sword to pierce through our heart so that all negativity runs away and through that she wants to plant the lotus for Shiva to settle down. She wants to take away all that ugliness from within. It's like an operation. But so delicate and so beautifully done, you never even felt it. The other day somebody gave me a book of all the navies and the vibrations are called as pan, that means pulsation. It's correct, no doubt. And it's called as anahata in Sanskrit language, meaning without percussions. But I was reading that book, I said, it's like 
going round and round, up and down, going into this maze, that maze. How can anybody understand this book is so terrible? Well, I have said all these things are much more than this and they know it so easily. If you read that book, two pages will get a headache, I tell you. But how the whole knowledge of Sahaja Yoga has come to you so beautifully, it's very remarkable. If you read the mantras, they'll give you explanations which has nothing to do with reality sometimes I feel. But even if it has, it's so circuitous, so complicated. I would say Adi Shankaracharya realized it and that's why he gave up the idea of writing any treaties. He said, let's make it simple, the praise of the mother finished. If you praise the mother, everything will. But that's not, I find that's not so. It's easy. See, human beings are great experts. They can be just like radios, praising, praising. Nothing goes inside the heart. But you have to develop that depth. In Sahaja Yoga we work through our heart, not through our brains. You have to develop that heart and to receive into it the greatness of other people. Now people can see what's wrong with others very easily. They don't want to see what's wrong with them. Any intelligent man can see that there's no need to have serialization. But a wise person sees what's wrong with him and he trusts. He trusts himself then because he's wise. He doesn't doubt, he knows he's wise, he knows what's wrong with him and what is to be done. So the work of the Goddess is very different today as you can see it clearly. Of course, symbolically it is the same, but it has become very subtle, very subtle. The first work is to destroy the negativity which is going on, as you know. The more light comes in, the ignorance will disappear, this light will spread, all the darkness will go away. But you are the lights. You have to put the lights on and you have to look after your light and you have to make that light eternal. This is one work which you are doing. It's a beautiful work of the Goddess you are doing is to spread light, enlighten people. The negativity that is around you is not so dangerous as whatever is in you. Today it has become subtler. The negativity has become subtler. It's entered into your being. And be careful, it may any time top on you. Even one step you do not put right when you are climbing up, you can go down. So one has to be alert without tension. You have to be alert without tension. And the alertness grows when the light goes within, you start seeing. Immediately you see, oh, that's it. So, I, the so and so, that's it. And you know how to correct it, and you know how to put it right, <coughs> and immediately you take to it. Like a, a good sari now has something fallen on it, immediately you clean it. In the same way, we have to be very, very alert, daksha is the word for that. Now this was the work of the Goddess before. Goddess used to give enlightenment 
and goddess used to be alert for her. She would sit like a tigress for her children. They are praying, they are doing puja, they are doing some sort of a uh, home, a havana, so the goddess would sit out, protect them from all negativity coming, all rakshasas coming, kill them, just do that. But that stage is gone now. Now she's entered into you. So you have to kill your negativity, you become as powerful as your mother. No negativity can touch you. So you can give realization, you got that power very well. And you can watch your defects more than that of others. And you try to put them out because they are not good, they are not for your benevolence, they are not for your ascent. By that nobody is going to gain. At the collective level it just works automatically. You don't have to worry, it comes to culmination and a person goes out. As if somebody runs up like a blind fellow on a cliff and jumps, jumps down. You don't have to worry too much about this. It just works, you have seen, it has worked that way. Now another quality that you have, to believe that Goddess is working through you. In you she resides. You have got the powers. It's penetrated into you. Is that you can comfort people, you can cure them, You can give them peace, you can give them bliss. But then what Goddess has done in you is that she has given you the bliss. You have become bliss. Like they say, say a cool air conditioner, you get the cool from there. In the same way, if you are emitting bliss, you give bliss to others. But there is no bliss within yourself. But what bliss you can give to others? So a Sahajogi has to be a blissful like the Goddess. You see, she has very extreme characters as you must have known that. She's extremely cruel, she can be very cruel and she can be extremely gentle. Like two ragas of yesterday. She could be extremely harsh, extremely harsh, beyond all human expectations. And she could be extremely mild. So this harsh part we need not have. It will just work. This part is only kept for the Divine. You just take to the other side. Let this harsh part be looked after by the Divine. After all, Divine also must do some work. If you do all the work, then what will Divine do? So the Divine will look after that part. So you have to enjoy yourself as the Goddess enjoys herself enjoys her place, enjoys her peace, enjoys her everything, her creation, her children, their love, everything she enjoys, in the same way you have to enjoy. You have to know about everything, you have to be absolutely knowledgeable. And nothing more is needed but just to say that, O Divine, Please protect us at the most. Even if you don't say it's all right, you're looked after. The Divine is working round the stage, you see, you don't see it, it's all there invisible. And you are on the stage, so they are looking out how to, what to focus light, where to put, what light to put, what is to be done, what is to be changed around, everything they are arranging. You are nicely here. So you need not do all that work, you do your work of acting, 
and saying dialogues. That's your work. Let them do their jobs. They are doing very well. They are excellently placed and they are experts. So to leave certain things into the hands of the Divine is what we call a surrender. And that much of this is done. Then most of your things will work out so miraculously. You will be amazed. How, Mother, how it has worked out? We never expected how things we got it done. There's a very, very big force working, the force, the energy, which is the source of all the energies, which has created this great universe, which has created this Mother Earth, created this Sun, which has created you very delicately. This force is working. And that force is looking after you, so proud of you that you have come on the stage now. So as it is, we are today praying to the Goddess that help us to fight our negativity within us. Give us your tiger so that we fight. Give us your lion so we fight. Let us fight all these horrible animals that are within us, these horrible haunting things that are within us, these horrible conditionings we have, we have to get rid of it. Still, still, if you watch yourself, lots of conditionings are there, lots. Thin. You see, if you see there are covered with very thin curtains and you don't see it, but they are there. Let the tiger enter into all these dens and find out. And you enjoy that, riding over the horse, riding over the lion and riding over the tiger. Like a goddess, why not? After all, children get all the heritage of the mother, don't they? So you have all the heritage available to you, but you have to be worthy in the sense that you have to know that you are worthy, that's all. You have to just know that you are worthy and that you can do it. So again, today we are here to do this puja, which would have been in Perth, but somehow or other it was not so. And it's uh, luck for you to have this puja. And it is something of a very deeper nature, very subtler nature. Like your blood it is because on these seven days they say the Goddess has to be at the red all the time because it's blood. And the first color you see in the womb of your mother is red. It's the security. One side is the red rag. Another side, it is a security. So for you, it is the security. Around you, every place you go, it is there. Just feel it. You have entered, I must say, into the kingdom of God, no doubt about it. You all have entered. So beautifully you are settled down. May God bless you. कृपया निशब्द ध्यान में बने रहे
श्री माता जी से प्रार्थना करते हैं परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपके श्री स्कंद माता स्वरूप को हमारा कोटि कोटि नमन श्री माता जी आपकी कृपा में हम संतुष्ट हैं कृपा कर हमारा आत्मविश्वास दृढ़ कीजिए हमें सुरक्षा प्रदान कीजिए हमें निर्भय बनाइए हमारे सारे दोष अशुद्ध इच्छा दुर्गुण नष्ट कीजिए और हमें सद्गुण संपन्न बनाइए हमें शक्ति से आशीर्वादित करें परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपके श्री चरणों में हमारा कोटि कोटि नमन अनंत कोटि नमन जय श्री माता जी हम सब सामूहिक बंधन लेते हैं आज का ध्यान सत्र संपन्न होता है आज घर में श्री अर्गला स्त्रोत्र का पठन करें और अनाहत पर चित्त रख के ध्यान की स्थिति में बने रहें। धन्यवाद जय श्री माता जी